and more. Open wide for Burger Chef's 100% all beef burgers, like our thick, juicy Super Chef, cooked from a full quarter pound that's big bite delicious. Open wide America, you never can forget. You get more, more, more to like it. Four employees at a Burger Chef restaurant in Speedway, Indiana, went missing on Friday, November the 17th, 1978. Initially, it was thought that this was just an instance of minor larceny that scared the workers away. But it was evident the next day that this robbery kidnapping had developed into a quadruple homicide. By Sunday, November the 19th, 1978, Johnson County's remote woodlands, 40 minutes from the restaurant, had yielded the bodies of Jane Fritt, Daniel Davis, Mark Flemons, and Ruth Ellen Shelton. On that fatal night, 45 years ago, four young workers were performing the Burger Chef's closing procedures. Three of the workers were still in high school, so it's likely that they were chatting about impending assignments and homework for class. At about 11 p.m., the culprits ambushed the four workers by sneaking in through the rear entrance. May the 5th, 1958, saw the birth of Jane Preet. Jane worked as the Burger Chef Restaurant's assistant manager. After three years at another Burger Chef store, she recently transferred to the Speedway location. She was 20 years old, well known for participating in numerous activities, and was regarded as a diligent worker. On December the 31st, 1961, Mark Sylvester Flemons was conceived. He is described as amusing and very welcoming. He was a student at Speedway Indiana High School and a member of the band when he passed away. Mark and his family were one of the few African American families living in the area. Daniel Danny Davis's birth date was September the 6th, 1962. He had only recently begun working as a cook at Speedway Burger Chef. Danny was so inexperienced that he had not yet received his first paycheck. Danny went to Indiana's Decatur Central High School. He belonged to the Latin Club while he was a sophomore. After high school, Danny intended to join the Air Force and was interested in photography. He was reserved and retained a small group of friends, yet he was passionate about his interests. Ruth Ellen Shelton, who was 17 years old when she passed away, was born on December the 19th, 1960. Ruth was on the honor roll and was highly educated and motivated. She wanted to work as a computer scientist. She was there to obtain some early college credits at what is now the University of Indianapolis. Ruth participated in the West Side Church of the Nazarene Choir, demonstrating her love of music. Investigators have developed a comprehensive timeline of what happened that evening, but nothing is known about what was happening inside the restaurant when the two criminals broke in. Like every night, the Burger Chef restaurant closed at 11 p.m. The four staff members were expected to work a few more hours to complete the restaurant's closing procedures, clean it, and prepare it for the opening shift the following day. Despite not having a planned shift, Mark Flemons chose to cover for Ginger Anderson, a co-worker who had gone out with another employee, Brian Crink. Brian and Ginger arrived at the restaurant at 11.45 p.m. and saw that Jane's car was not there, despite the lights being on and the back door being ajar. 
After dropping Ginger off at her residence, Brian initially did not give it much thought before returning to Burger Chef to check on his co-workers. When Brian arrived, he discovered none of the four staff members were there. As he walked into the restaurant, he noticed that the cash register was on the floor and empty and that his co-workers' items were still in the office. When Brian realized something was awry, he called the police. A report was made when the investigators arrived, but the situation was never thoroughly examined. It was thought that the employees must have skipped work, banded together to steal the money, and then gotten into Jane's 1974 Chevrolet Vega to make a clean getaway. Because Jane's car was not in the parking lot and the register was empty. So rather than investigating the situation and treating everything as suspicious, the restaurant was given the all clear to reopen the following day. The detectives overlooked crucial clues, like the items left behind by the staff and the open rear door to the restaurant, a door that was seldom ever utilized by personnel. Any proof of what occurred was unintentionally destroyed during the cleaning, and no photos were taken that evening because no one thought it was a crime scene. We screwed up the investigation from the beginning. Buddy Elwinger, a police investigator, commented on how the scene was handled. To make matters worse, we are aware that the only photo of the restaurant ever taken was taken by morning shift staff after it had been thoroughly cleaned before diners arrived. The next morning at 4 a.m., Jane's unlocked automobile was located close to the Speedway police station and was stuffed with strange cigarette butts. The police started to suspect foul play and a massive search began. Two days later, on November the 19th, 1978, a couple living in White River Township, some 15 miles from the Burger King Chef location, found all four victims' bodies close to Johnson County Woods. Each of the young adults was still donning the brown and orange Burger Chef outfits made of polyester with dried up bloodstains all over them. Danny and Ruth were discovered face down near a dirt walkway. Both had been fatally shot with a 38 caliber pistol in the head and neck. The officers determined that they were both slain at the same time since they were found side by side. According to police speculation, Jane and Mark fled after Ruth and Danny were shot. The location of Jane's body was 50 to 75 yards away. The knife's blade broke off inside of her chest after being stabbed numerous times with such force that the grip was nowhere to be recovered. Mark was found most separated from the others and closest to the main road. He was flat on his back by a creek. Mark had been struck in the face and eventually choked on his own blood. The police believed Mark was lost and may have run into a tree accidentally, knocking him out cold before being hit by an unknown chain-like object. Police have been diligently attempting to work out what could cause the trespassers to transform into robbers, kidnappers, and murderers. Do any of the employees know any of the men? Was this a planned crime or a crime that got out of hand? All of the victims had watches and money still on them, which raised the intriguing question of whether there was a reason other than robbery, according to the crime scene investigation team. There are still far too many unanswered questions. 
On November the 23rd, the Indiana State Police established a tip line, which resulted in a flood of information. However, few of them were reliable leads. Police did have one lead, thanks to an unnamed eyewitness who described two individuals they saw lingering around the burger chef business, suspiciously before the tragedy. Police unveiled clay busts of the two probable suspects the following day. The Indiana State Police employed this technique to assist in an investigation for the first time in this case. The knife blade used in the incident was then made public by Indiana State Police in 2018. Even though the inquiry led to the arrest of multiple individuals, the case is still open. I believe this case can still be solved. Someone out there still knows what happened. I hope and pray they come forward. This was a terrible tragedy. These were just babies who had their whole life ahead of them. Tell me what your thoughts are and have you ever heard of this case? Thank you for watching.